The invasion of the Tatars and the Mongols as the unification of Russia under the rule of the Novgorod Yaroslav dynasty of Georgi Genghis Khan and then his brother Yaroslav Batu Khan, Ivan Khalida. The issue with the Mongol Anatoly Fremenko. Allah Wallace Giddy. Above, we have already referred to the invasion of the Tatars and the Mongols as the unification of Russia. See our analysis of the report written by the Hungarian missionary and the contemporary of the events in question. So, my not showed you a picture of uh, Black Genghis Khan, right? Let's go, let's go. So they got this ruse, and this is their depiction of a ruse, right? Michael of Charnigov passed between the fires in accordance with ancient Turco Mongolian tradition. Batu Khan stabbed him to death for his refusal to do obeisance, to obey, to bow, to Genghis Khan's shrine in the pagan ritual. Note that Genghis Khan is depicted as a black man by the Russian painter V.S. Smirnov, 1883. Very important one. <laughs> See that crescent moon flow on top, right? <clears throat> All right let's go. <laughs> so, he got his chalice sitting real pretty. That's his shrine. They say Batu Khan. He got his blade out, right? Stabbed the man for not bowing down. Look how proudly he's standing. He ain't bowing down, right? Now, this is supposed to be a ruse, right? A ruse, huh? And we're talking about this ruse in Russian history, and you're like, what is Genghis Khan, this black man? <laughs> Painted by the Russian painter V.S. Smirnov in 1883. What does he have to do with Russia? Now, I mean, you know, if you walk through this particular portal, this entrance, and history now becomes your story. And you're like, whoa, the whole world is looking like me. You're researching Tartarian stuff. And they're talking about Tartary. Not understanding that you're talking about so-called black people. The more they try to make some super white race of Tartaria, red-headed Tartarians. We're talking red, ruddy Nagas, copper colored Nagas. And this is a family affair. It's more and more war, right? <laughs> Yeah, we all in between the timeline timelines. We're talking for the manco, man. But before we get back there, just walk with me in this understanding, at least for the for the sake of surfing, you know, a wave. Maybe it's entertainment for you. All right. So entertain this, man. <laughs> Genghis Khan, a black man. He's a black man. But his son looks like some typical so-called Mongol, right? So-called Mongol, because the real Mongol just means great one, which we're getting out the same document. So just because he's a Mongol don't mean he looks like these phenotypes. It means a great one, right? So the battle and the title and the war like Game of Thrones is for greatness, man. Who got the most dragons on them, man? So you see how proud... This Rus, this Rus, R U S Rus, Rus is standing. This Rus is copying your swag, my nigga. This is what a Rus looks like. And all you gotta do is look at the Rus crest. It's not hard to find. 
Just put in Andrew's family crest in your Google or whatever. And tell me you don't come up with a black man, right? <laughs> so they want to call it a Saracen. Which connects with the 18, or excuse me, 14, 52 parable bull. Doctrine of Discovery. We weighing all the singular, singular the premises with due meditation, noting that since we had formerly by other letters of ours granted, among other things, free and ample faculty to the aforesaid King Alfonso to invade what? Who? To invade who? Search out who? Capture who? Vanquish who? Subdue all Saracens, right? This is a Saracen's head, God. And the Saracen is a Rus, God. Are you as my naga? Are you W as my naga? This is your family crest, man, right? <laughs> uh, my naga, right? Lost tribes of Israel. The royals. The real regals. Connected with the kings of Jerusalem. Where X marks the spot where the two cross sticks meet, right? Where the paths meet, that mama's talking about, I'm standing where the paths meet. At the entrance to the city, saying, boy, you must be thoughtless. <laughs> if you ain't been thinking about my ways. This is wisdom talking, Proverbs chapter 8. So this is the truth of the roofs. And that painting I just showed you with gang is that so-called white man. <laughs> There's an original painting that has him as a so-called Naga or Negro, should I say, so-called black man. So they've one by one in these paintings, they'll change one character at a time, man. And yet we're still talking Rus. We're still talking Saracen, cold word, cold word, because they want to subdue all Saracens. They ain't never retracted on this commitment to subdue you man they want to subdue all Saracens they want to subdue Israel but then you say who wants to subdue Israel who wants to subdue all these Saracens <laughs> it's the same ones that's confederate against you right it's back to Psalms 83 right I mean, you know, we we can keep going round and round, but it has to make sense. You know, this this story, you got to tap into this story, man. It's the greatest story that's never fully been told, but it has to unfold out that ruach of the calm folk. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> when we're just talking covenant, chosen, sworn. Unto David, we're talking seed, established, built up to all generations. So we talk David, we're talking covenant that the Most High has with the seed of Israel to all generations. That means that although they want to invade you, search you out, capture you, vanquish you, and subdue all Saracens and who they want to call pagans when we call them heathen, they call us pagans, huh? Okay. But we call them heathen, right? <coughs> subdue all pagans and Negroes, but not just any Negro. No, no, no. Remember, these roofs are being attacked. And Batu is the son of Genghis. And how come he's not? How come he ain't black? How come, how come he ain't black? Because Genghis surely is black. 
Maybe that's weird. Genghis Khan and then oh his brother <laughs> his brother so I keep saying son Shalak this particular document is calling calling uh, Batu Khan Genghis his brother so that means this picture is supposed to be the brother of this black man <laughs> how come he ain't black like I said, there's an original painting that all these people are swarthy nuggets, man. How you gonna have a black man on the shrine and then his brother is supposed to be stabbing his roots and the roots, the truth is that the roots is you, uh, curly head, uh, uh, swarthy Sarah's son. Sons of Sarah must be the Sarah's sons, huh? Uh-oh. They keep saying Arab, but are we talking Arab proper, boss? Arab proper? Because remember, man, I mean, y'all remember this stuff. It's not hard to find. Out the encyclopedia. Okay, let's go here. Cyclopenia Britannica. Let's put in Jock Tom. Uh, they give me all these other Jock Tom looks. Let me get the link that we got on Jock Time. There we go. Jewish Encyclopedia. I was in Britannica. Jock Time, younger son of Abra, right? And, you know, just talking about the air flow quickly. You know what I mean? Go get the drop because we did two, three, four hour long, five hour long drops on all these things, you know what I'm saying? Um, individually, we're just putting it all together, man. We're popping off, so. It says Jokhtan in Arabic, all right? So this is the son of Eber, right? The son of Eber rule. Eber is Quiver, right? Kiva, Kiva, Eber. Younger son of Eber. They call him progenitor of the 13 Arabic tribes, right? They were just calling uh, the Saracen in Arab, right? And, you know, so we're talking Arab, right? And we got Sheba coming out of this. Ophir, right? Crystal fear, crystal fur, the Christ of Ophir. Christ means anointed, anointed of Ophir. <laughs> Who's the kind of Ophir? But they now hijacked it with Christopher. Right? Christopher Columbus is now. <laughs> crystal, Christ of Ophir. Havila, all these are cities of gold. But we're talking Arabia. So Joktan in Arabic literature means the name. Katan. Now, how this connects with the Kara Katai? How does the Katai connect with the Katas and the Kara, like Karata, Karati, Karata? Do Katas? We're talking the Kata and the Joktan, since we know there's no J in English, you know what I mean? It's, it's the Katan or the Yucatan, right? And the Yucatan is connected with the Meshi, Moshe, Mexico, and Meshi. You know, obviously, you know what I'm saying? So you got the Meshi flow. You got the Eber. You got the Yucatan flow. Yaktan, Joktan, Kata flow. The Kara Kata flow. Kar, Karati. <laughs> All right. In accordance with this statement, Arab genealogists hold Katan to be the first king of Yemen. So that this whole Yemen flow is coming out of the Eber flow. These are not... Uh, tribes of Ishmael, these are not tribes of Moab, this is not Noble Drew Ali and them tribes. Nah, man. <laughs> You're talking about the original Eber, son of Eber, Yaktan, Katan, and his son, Yarub, the first person who spoke Arabic. So as an Eberu, as a son of Eber, 
that's an Arab proper. Let's read about it. This is because the legendary form of the tradition that Catan was the progenitor of the southern Arabs or Arab proper. There's a difference. While the Ishmaelite Arabs were originally of non-Arab stockmanite. So although, you know, many other more more ish, you know, nations, you know, would try and can try and do try to, you know, trace themselves all the way back into the Ibaru flow, there's still a demarcation line between an Arab proper <laughs> and a what? Pretending to be Arabs. Now you, you just think Arab is like some ethnicity thing. You're not an Arab if you're not a rabbi, <laughs> a rav, a rav in Hebrew. You're talking about a law, a lawgiver, a shepherd, man. Now, who's the original shepherds? If you're talking Hebrew, then you're talking about a connection to the Most High directly, right? You're going back <laughs> to to the actual lineage that's being, you know, uh protected and nourished and promised a remnant, you know what I'm saying? Then they try to out a rabbi us and now they are a rap, a rap, you know what I mean? But the a rap connects to the proper Yucatan. <laughs> Yucatan Meshi Moshe flow. Okay. They adopted Arab customs and intermarried with genuine Arabs. So as we get back in this Genghis Khan flow, that's exactly what Genghis did. <laughs> Hijacked the Preston, sons of David, daughters. They took the daughters and they what? They intermarried with them, took the wives, intermarried with them. So now they had an Arab proper uh, connection by marriage. Now they can say this is our land too. That marriage connected them with the land rights, man. Do you see the gang? They didn't love these beautiful sisters. They wanted to be tied into the land through the mother. Which is why the Jewish community to this day goes through the mother. Because the mother, going along the Genghis Khan flow, the mother is going to connect you to Arab proper land, man. Land rights, birth rights, inheritance that they're now intermarried with through the mother. Because they can't hijack the seed. All they can do is kill the seed. Kill the seed, right? Kill the seed. Enslave the seed. Enslave the who? Sarah's son. Who are the Arab <laughs> proper? Not the so-called Arab today improper or pretending to be Arab. Why? Because they're not a rabbi. They're not a rab. To be a rab means you are connected with the code. In the sanctuary of the creator, you're not going off into the, no idolatry, man. You're cold keepers. You're not following no other prophets outside of Israel. That's why I say these are not noble Jewalis people. Because that's their prophet. Israel don't need a prophet outside of Israel. Israel never had to follow prophets outside of the house of Israel. What are you talking about? We have one shepherd forever. Along the way, we got Hamashiachs. We got priest Kahs. We got priest queens, man. Hey, hop to... Lady Maria, man, we'll talk some more about the Anna Flow, Lady Hannah Flow, Queen Tamara Flow. Indeed, we we understand the the need for the balance of you know I'm saying queens and kings over here. You know, what I mean, it's not one thing; it's a connection. It has to come together. That's why we keep getting Proverbs chapter eight because it's the clearest message from Mama you gonna get, man. <laughs> Power is mine. Understanding is mine. These are my ways, Mama saying. So, please understand. We we understand. Uh, you know how the aquas are extremely important to the balance in our tribe. You know, what I mean, in our kingdom. You know, what I mean, and um, you know, without a proper balance, man, they got us divided and conquered, man. So, the men can't boast themselves over the aquas, and the aquas can't boast themselves over the ox. It has to come together. You know what I'm saying? Sheba and Solomon have to come together. You know what I mean? David and 
uh, Bathsheba have to come together to form Solomon. And we'll get back in that with the Uriel flow because we have a whole other take on it when you recon the Queen Tamar flow and the Uriel connected to that. Well, let's go. Yeah, there's two Uriels, man. <laughs> but who's who's pretending to be a rabbi, right? And who's a proper heir, a proper Arab? And who is Katan Katai, right? So when they put Arab, on a naga. When they put a rab on a naga, Saracen was used in the early centuries of the Roman or Remani who got the drop. Remon means pomegranate in Hebrew. Remon, R I M O N. The pomegranate connects you to the promised land like Joshua and Caleb had to show the pomegranates that they were in the promised land to get the pomegranates, right? Bring them back to Moshe. The pomegranates, the, even a pomegranate on the tassel of, of, of the fringes and the garments, it was important, man. So the pomegranate is important. The Riman is important. They turn it into Roman. <laughs> that just connects you to the promised land or Kalelus. So these Reman promised land pomegranate nagas that they're describing as a rabbi tribe or a what? <laughs> of course, of course. Arab proper. Katan, Yucatan is the first king of Yemen. Why is Yemen important? Ah, uh, why is Yemen important? Oh, yeah. You might have forgot. You might have forgot, man. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay, okay. Let me get back over here. <laughs> I got so many windows up. I'm like, hold on, man. <laughs> Why is Yemen important, man? Because America's been at war 222 out of 239 years, right? And after they're popping off with the Shikamago Wars, back to the gang's con flow, it's more and more, right? So... This is black on black. If you don't get it by now, except we ain't black. But, you know, just to speak their language so you get the coloration. It's black people on black people, right? Okay. Now, these so-called blacks, they don't call themselves blacks. <laughs> They're being called Saracens. They're being called a rabbis. A rab. A rab tribe. Right? But now, Saracen is commonly applied to the Mediterranean pirates or a group of nomadic Arab, which means it's Arab improper, right? Now you're talking about Arab pretending. Now you're talking about pretending. I'm talking proper. They talking pretending. You see the difference, man? That's who you would call a muster rat, man. Because <laughs> you're adopting the rabbi Israelite customs into marrying with our women gangers you're a musty rat man you're a musty ass <laughs> not a real you're a must you're a mooster rat man come on man come on man come on ishmael come on ishmael i know you sons of abraham i mean at least you are connected to abraham moab you know, that's, they're not sons of Abraham. They're sons of Lot, right? And Abraham's taking care of Lot. But he wanted a bigger Lot, right? And Moab comes out of that situation, right? We know about that. Ammon and them. But they're not seeds of Abraham. They are seeds of Lot, God. Ishmael are actually seeds of Abraham, God. And they're still pretending. 
which tells you what? It's not just that you can connect yourself to Abraham more. You connecting yourself to Abraham don't make you more. You're still pretending to be a rabbi to follow a code that you're pretending to connect with the code of the creator. You're connected with your own diversion of the code of the creator. You're lifting up Ishmael as this chosen tribe and all this stuff. When Isaac got the Baruch, Isaac got the blessing. But the covenant is in you, man, nah. We got to boast ourselves above Isaac. We got to pretend to be a rabbi. We'll have a code too. Even Genghis had a code. Having a code don't make you not pretending. Your code itself is a pretending code. Because you're not going off the original code. The original Baruch. The original tribes. That are in order. Kings of the earth. Queens of the earth. Royalty of the earth. You turn them into... Turned us into captives, man. Saracens. We are Israel. And it's clear that there's a bunch of melee tribes outside of Israel that are pretending that are confederate against you, confederate against me, that want to invade, search out, capture, vanquish, subdue all Saracens, wink, wink, Israelites, because our own people are invading us. Shit, man. Our own people been behind this, man. This is who's invading the Preston. Now they want to call this pretender a, a true Roos. He, he's a Roos? He's a Roos, huh? Is that right? Is that right? I think we see clearly. That Roos is being slaughtered because he's an enemy of their anointing. They came to America, slaughtered the Indians in India's period because they considered us enemies, savages, right? Enemies of their anointing. Christ is just a generic Greek word. Stop connecting it to one man. Somebody left a comment that said they got a lot of evidence that Genghis Khan is their Christ. I said, whoa. Now we're talking Esteban. Esteban the Moor, like Esteban Nico. <sighs> Phantoms and duplications. Enemies of the Christ wherever placed in the kingdoms, dukedoms, principalities. So you have a kingdom. Right? You had a king. You have a family crest <laughs> that represents a whole kingdom. Our minds rocking with you. Wisdom is the conqueror of all fortune, man. You're found in Cathay. They call it Cathness. <laughs> and Cathay, Cathay, it's just Catan. You know, back to titles. Catness is Cathay, is Katai, is Katai. So they find you in Catness, they're finding you in Joktan, they're finding you in the Yucatan, they're finding you in Meshi, Mexico, they're finding you in India Superior as a proper, not a pretending rabbi, an Arab proper. So they call you Arab, right? <laughs> they call you Saracen, huh? 
I call you Israel. I call you Rus. They say this is a Rus. I say that ain't the truth. <laughs> it's iconoclasm. Iconoclasm. What is it made to iconoclasm? Man, the rejection, destruction of religious images that's heretical, the doctrine of iconoclasts, the action of attacking or assertively rejecting cherished beliefs. <coughs> and they do that, <coughs> Shalak, they do that through changing of images. They can iconoclast and repaint your images. They have now attacked your images, right? Presta John, the last noble image before he was rejected, destroyed the image, now changed to another image of this black brute savage. What happened to your regal? What happened to your royal? Who or who is Presta John? We're going to get back in Lost Tribes and Promised Lands by Ronald Sanders, but this. He calls your last noble image. Not to be worshipped, but for you to remember what you look like, <laughs> your beautiful garments, the crown on your head, your kingdom, right? Your kingdom. If he got a crown, he got a kingdom. Iconic class. A destroyer of images used in religious worship. Why destroy the images? <laughs> so that they can give you a new picture. But their ass is busted out if this is who they worship, man. Come on, man. Copper color man. So his family's also got to look like him. That don't mean they on our side. <laughs> That means we see what happened, that this a black man went to war directly against Presa John to get the crown because he had a kingdom oppressed. And that kingdom, wheresoever place, man, they went to vanquish, capture, and subdue all Saracens. Who are the Russians? Because <laughs> all that is connected. Asia here, Asia there. We got the Anion. You know what I'm saying? Anion straight. Straight of Anion connecting. You know, you, uh, Sarah Palin said you can see Russia from Alaska. All this is connected. So Russia, as big and vast as Russia is, right? When I, when I talk rude, man, I need you to understand. This ain't no white heaven when I talk Russia. If I say Russia, Russia, map. Right. And they give us a bunch of pictures of Russia on the map, right? I need you to understand how big this territory is. Let's see if I can find a simple breakdown here. <laughs> I just need you to focus right quick, man. <laughs> you got Belarus, Ukraine. This is all the whole war, right? Look how small Ukraine is. It's like all of America is going to war against uh, Chicago. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's how big Russia is, right? So, you can't give this to no white people, man. <laughs> you can't give this to no Caucasians. <laughs> Caucasus, this, all, the, all this is nigga talk. Caucasus is nigga talk. 
Kazaria and Kazar, you can't even call them Kazars. Because the original Kazaria goes back to the Mo Mosak, Mazaka, Mosak, the founder, Moshe. All this connects back to Moshe and the Hebrews. You can't give them nothing. You can't give these people no land, man. I'm telling you, man, that's the secret. You get that out your head, bone. That these, uh, that these other people got any land anywhere. That, that doesn't exist. That's not true. All right. All of Russia looks like you. Which is why you the roost. I'm saying whatever your family is, is falling under these titles, right? It's not just one family <laughs> that is all this land's going to one exact family. No, I'm saying you, we all fall under this roost title in conjunction with Israel. You know what I'm saying? This is all land connected with the three Indias, my not, all right? Ka. Then you got, they put China here. We know the real China's over it. In America, man, <laughs> we got maps that say uh, the, the kind of China's right here, man. We got India Superior over here. We got British Museum maps in the 1500s. Got Preston John right in the middle. That doggone smack in North America, right? It says Preston John, right? We've seen it a million times. We out of here. So we're talking three Indias. We're talking the Rus land. So you can see how big it is, right? Huh? Talking no roofs. So this jabroni right here can't claim to be of no roofs, man. <laughs> this ain't not. This ain't what Russia is looking like. This ain't what Rus land is looking like. Kiev Rus is looking like. Belarus is looking like. That ain't the truth. This is what the Rus is looking like. This is what the Rus is looking like. Press the John, Emperor of the Three Indians, my lord. Saracen head. They want to subdue all Saracen. Vanquish their kingdoms. So you got a kingdom, right? <laughs> Dukedoms, principalities, dominions, right? They want to do treaties for your domain. Kalei loose possessions, take your things, all your movable things, all your immovable things, and reduce you to forever captivity, perpetual slavery, boss. I don't think Preston trying to hear this forever talk, you know. We get being out of cold. We get uh, Hosea 3 going a long time without a king. We get punishment. That forever talk, though, that just don't. That don't vibe too well with the Preston. Not when you got one shepherd. Covenant with David, priest, king. They want to replace him with JC, right? Era pretender or a rabbi proper, right? They want to re reduce the era proper, the, the Sarah's son, sons of Sarah's son, sons of Abraham, <laughs> to perpetual slavery. And apply and appropriate to himself and his successors, the kingdoms, right? And who's that? Well, Again, again, starts right here with Genghis. So we get back in this for the man called Genghis flow, get back into the serpent of wisdom flow, keep talking dragons, see how we connect things, right? Because it gets pretty amazing by the time you get to where we at in the investigation. We're talking real simple, boss. Things start to fall into place. We just got to keep reading. At this point, my naga, we just going to keep reading. I ain't trying to 
tell you something. I ain't trying to teach you nothing. I just want to read along with you. And I want to surf the wave. Con. Genghis. Preston. Say Genghis was like the little homie of Preston, you know. Preston and Genghis' dad used to fight in war side by side. Preston protected Genghis for a long time, but one day Genghis wanted the crown. He wanted the throne. He wanted to be the Khan. And that's where it all goes left. That's where it all went left for Genghis. I mean, he got the Khan for a minute and transferred the Khan to his descendants. And this is where it starts. So these other black people who are now descendants of this black man, right? <laughs> call them the boule, right? Just call them the boule. Say that they might be the ones behind the scenes pulling strings. It's possible. They might be the ones behind the scenes pulling strings. Because they convinced us that gangers look, you know, like these jabronis down here now, right? That's supposed to be his bro, right? <laughs> nah, man. You ain't gonna talk no forever perpetual slavery on the Preston, the seeds of Preston, the seeds of Kandawi. You're not gonna apply appropriate to yourself and your descendants, your successors. Your descendants, because not only did they do it in real time with the Genghis hijack, they did it in real time on paper, not just with the Papal Bull 1452. And shout out to Bro Lex for that, man, for real, for real. Great recon. We're talking descendants and we're talking America. Ka. <laughs> Ka means priest in Hebrew. Air proper. Hebrew. Let's go. Copper color races. Found here, boss. Found here, not brought here, boss. Found here. 18, 1828 let you know. But now applied to the successors, descendants of Europeans born in America, boss. And who's the first? European <laughs> Emperor of the Inca, right? Back to old Charlesy boy. See how we got back to Charles? See how we got back to old Charles? Holy Roman Emperor Charles V. Yeah. So what does Holy Roman Emperor Charles V have to do with Genghis Khan, right? Great question. Yeah. Charles V is not. And the real Charles was a typical pale, dramatic Habsburger with a long, prognatic jaw like that's what they want to iconoclast, right? Change the image. Well, who does that benefit? I mean, now uh, they can hide in the in their tents. Change the images. Now there's a new looking Genghis Khan. Now there's a new looking Charles. Everybody's been iconoclastic. So we got to go back in time and find the images. <sighs> Before they got to Genghis, they got to the Rus, they got to Batu, they got to... All these jabronis around him. But Genghis Khan is still depicted as a black man. In 1883. Let that sink in. Charles has a lot to do with Genghis Khan. Could be Genghis Khan. If we're just talking Kang, Ka, or Kang. 
Now we gotta talk timelines. Now we gotta talk time travel. Things that make you go, hmm. He's going, hmm. We're going, hmm. He's sitting in his time travel seat. That means he can go back to the 1200s, pop off a war with Preston, right? Just like in Marvel, he's popping off a war against Preston John. That means he can go 300 years in the future, be Charles V, my nigga. Pop that off. He could be Nebuchadnezzar, uh, kidnapping Daniel and the sons of Judah and them, but still paying his respects, you know what I'm saying, by raising Daniel a little bit. And even though he took the kingdom, he's still trying to be nice to some of the tribe of Israel, right? He's not trying to be a complete evil monster, but he definitely wanted the throne. He wanted the seat. This fool could time travel. He can go pop off war against the cool say the 1800s, right? I mean, we just talking Marvel, but that's if we're stretching our mind bones, you know. Go get pressed to 114. We did a nice wake-up stretch. <laughs> they love to veteran eye. Yeah. Kang has a lot to do <laughs> with Charles V. He look just like him. Kane got a lot to do with Charles E. Boy. I can't make this up. For He's time traveling, boss. I'm going to get there. We're going to talk quantum. We out of here. I told y'all. Just understand that this was their decree. This is their battle decree to vanquish. To invade. Where are they invading? Everywhere. <laughs> Everywhere you are. But they did it strategically. Bit by bit. Piece by piece. Our last stand. Back to this Yemen flow. That's we're talking Joktan and Yemen. But our last stand was right here. This was our last stand. With the Shikamago Cherokee that they make no deals, they make no treaties. This is who's rocking with Dragon Canoe. For real, for real. Dragon Canoe ain't making no deals, man. Their name wasn't really Shikamagwa. They just connected them to a river of death because of the slaughter. Because they were being invaded, searched out, captured, right? Kingdom, dominion stolen, perpetual slavery. This is who went head up against the last major invasion. These, this is Israel, my God. I'm telling you to your face, Paul. This is Hashra. This is Jacob. Refers to a group that's separated from a greater body of the Cherokee. Now, the greater body of Cherokee is like me saying the Hebrews. Very general. Because all these tribes could try to connect to Eber or Abraham one way or the other. And now they're a part of the Hebrews. And now you got the Moors talking about that they're Hebrews too, right? Nah, stop it, man. Y'all playing games, man. I'm talking tribal. When I talk Shikamagwa, Cherokee, I don't hear y'all saying y'all the Shikamagwa. Why? Because the Shikamagwa separated from the greater body. Now, we know we break down Cherokee to the Kara, Ka, Ki, Ka, Kara, Ka, Kara, Katai, Katan, back to the Joktan, Yucatan. You can go there. Karo, Kara, Ka. I can't make this up. It's right in our face. It's all coming together, boss. So, understand they separated the followers 
of oh yeah, the majority of the Cherokee people wish to make treaties of peace and friendship, right? <laughs> peace with the so-called American invaders near the end of 1776 and by the time you get to 70, 1778 you got the treaty of peace and friendship with the invader nah boss Shikamago wasn't making no deals they separated from the new, them turncoat jabronis that didn't want to fight for the land they wanted to make deals and treaty and they'll do it on the blood of their own people that's the more and more war before they Wake you up and call you black and say, hey, bro, uh, Islam, brother. Nah, man. <laughs> the Shikamago weren't rocking with Islam. They were rocking with the code of the creator. They're Arab proper, not Arab pretender. They kept, they kept the code of Exodus 20, my nagi. They're rocking with Moshe. They're rocking with Joshua. Sons of Jacob, daughters of Habakkuk. Then you make treaties on their head. Without your treaties, we would be straight. With your treaties, they ended up dead because they fought to the death. So they named them after the river of death. The followers of Skiagusta, Red Chief, Dragon Canoe or Dragon Canoe, moved with him in the winter 1776 to 1777 down the Tennessee or Tunisia, Tunisia River of oh. Away from the historic overhill Karaka towns. Relocated in a more isolated area, they established 11 new towns in order to gain distance from colonists, from the invaders trying to vanquish, subjugate the Saracens. So, whoever's behind a papal bull must look like us too. Because they sure didn't make treaties with them. Genghis' people, the frontier Americans associated Dragon Canoe with his band, tribe, with their new town on the Shikamago Creek. That's what they named him after, which means River of Death. Five years later, the Shikamago moved further west and southwest into present day Alabama. Now, just like you have that town. The Roost Town, we're talking Israel here. Follow the town, right? Yeah, okay. Follow the town. <laughs> Is there a difference between these towns when you understand <laughs> that the Shikamaga making their last stand? Represented the Tau, which is the last letter of the Hebrew, which means the mark, the sign, the signal. Back to that brazen bronze serpent thing, you know what I mean? Put your, uh, put a snake on a pole or put a dragon on the signal. What's the signal? Where the paths meet. Tell the dragon, go over there, stand where the paths meet. Put them on the towel, not a pole, not a cross with Christian cross with JC on it. The towel where the paths meet, where the energy meets, right? Like the ley lines, like the dragon lines, boss. Like the dragon lines, right? Put the dragon on the dragon lines. It's with numbers 20, uh, numbers, yeah, 21 should be read, right? Put a snake on a pole, nah. Put the copper dragon on the dragon lines where the paths meet. The signal, the mark, the sign, the signal is the towel. You follow the towel? Well, you follow the Shikamaga. You follow the roots. The Shikamagua settled in what? Alabama. All oh, right, A L. A <laughs> L is like the L, the all the L. Uh huh. Abba Ma. Woo! Al Abba Ma. That's Hebrew, con. Huh? <laughs> 
I can't make that up. Al Abba Abba Ma Ma's that ma'am sauce. <laughs> A beautiful thing. Establish five larger settlements. They were then more commonly known as the Lower Cherokee. This term was closely associated with the people of the five lower towns. And we can get more into it like we've been more into it. You know, researching these towns, researching these trails, right? This is where it's all happening, man. This is the last stand of the night. But because these turncoat Nagas was making treaties on the head bone of Dragon Canoe, to Kum, say, <sighs> culminating in this 1811 to Kum, say, war, Takum, Kum is to rise in Hebrew. Come on, man. Tau, ta. The Tau is the Te, the Ta. The Kum, the Say, the Sa. Some would say the Sa is the Lamb. I've heard that before. L A M B. The rising of the Lamb, you know, on the signal. Sounds like a, you know, sounds like where they phantomed and duplicated this rising of their Lamb in Christianity on the town. But we're just talking dragon. Because the Kumse also means shooting star. War of 1812, and it kept going. All this was residual wars based on that war. When were you a slave again? Because last time that I checked, you the copper color races found here, right? When, did they bring you over? No, they found you here. Found you here. Now apply to descendants. Descendants is very similar to successors, boss. And apply and appropriate to him and himself, his successors, his descendants. Same damn thing. They're coming after the Khan. They're coming after Saracens. They're coming after Israel. They're coming after the Khan. They're coming after Saracens. They're coming after Israel. Coming after you. Successor or descendants of the hijack. Now I'll take the title of the Khan. Successors can now take your kingdoms, man. The kingdom of the Ka 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 uh, you know, we just shared on the uh, IG, man. Hey, out to all the Nuggets dropping that drop on all the platforms you're dropping it. We do our best to share it. And, you know, it, it, it takes all of us, man. You know, one drop is just one drop. But all these drops equal a wave, my Naga. Now we surfing the wave, my Naga. We got that water. We got that water. Drop Nation got that water. So their successors, these descendants, now get your kingdom, duped them, <laughs> counties, principalities, dominions, possessions, and goods. And they get to convert them to his or her and their use and profit. Here we go. It's not just about the profit. It's really about spiritually disconnecting you, right? Psalm 83. The profit is a bonus, but they can print money, you know. 
within papers will never really have value unless we agree to that value system. But, but with that copper they keep mining, that's profit, right? And you, my knocker, you the real lick, because that melanin is worth over, what, $400 a gram, man? Oh, yeah. You worth more than gold. Uh, please, please remember that. Perpetual slavery means they can just murder us and then profit off our straw man, right? All that UCC filing, right? They, they can now tap into that account and make more money off us dead than alive. Perpetual slave. Take that money, invest it in further infrastructure to keep us in captivity, right? Perpetual slave. Psalm 83. Uh, did you forget? Did we forget? Keep not your silence. Hold not your peace. Be not still, Hawa. For your enemies are in an uproar. Did we forget? They want to put us in perpetual slavery. Sarah's sons. Our enemies are in an uproar. And they that hate you have lifted up the head. Genghis can't love you too much. He's lifted up his head. Oh, Charlesy boy can't love you too much, Hawa. Oh, look at his high, lofty, haughty-eyed Charles. Look at him lifting up his head. Yeah, those that hate us have lifted up their haughty eye head, right? We're seeing how history really is being clearly described. In these recent invasions, whether we're talking Charles V, Holy Roman Emperor, or we're talking about Genghis Khan invading the Khan Prince of John, they have lifted up their head. They hold crafty converse, man. They got their Geneva Conventions, man. They in, <laughs> they in Switzerland, they underwater. <laughs> They in the sky, they having crafty conversations against your people. Now you're the Saracens. Now you're just Arab tribes. You forgot you're the proper ones, the real ones, the real rabbi, right? The real Rob, the real Rus. I just thought of that. <laughs> I thought of the word robber. <laughs> Robbery, right? Robber. And how, you know, it breaks down, you know, to the rob. And the rob, R O B, is like the R A B. Just like with con, they turn it into pros and cons, where the con is now negative in English. Now the rob is now some negative thing in English. A robbery. Because this is what they've done. To you and me. They've robbed us, right? They robbed us, right? Who's the robber? Last time that I checked, they have taken all movable and immovable goods, man, and applied them to their own descendants. They've even robbed us of our title of Amaru Khan. And they just found us here, Paul, in the land of the Prester. And they robbed him. And they're mining and mining and mining. All our resources continuing to rob us. They rob us of our lives, our knowledge of self, our images with iconoclasm. Robbed is the rob, is the air rob. 
a Rob proper. Ka. They robbed all these nuggets. Cherokee, Seminole, Creek. All the nuggets. Rob the Nagas in the Philippines. <laughs> All these banana wars are Naga wars. No major war. Tell that to the Nagas getting killed. Then they suddenly got World War Two. Where, where's World War One, boss? I'm sorry. I just see Indian wars. Where's World War One? Is, is this World War One? Is this what they taught us? No. They didn't tell us World War I was them invading our families, mutilating and putting genocide, ruthless thievery, murder on our people, torture. That's World War I. So what's World War II? It gotta be the same damn mission statement. Because they're invading Mexico and Hawaii. They're invading the last black kings of Hawaii in them, right? Okay. Queens of Hawaii. Philippines. Now we're in World War II. They're talking Cold War. And they, now they're talking Russia when they was talking Cold War. And the Russia, yeah. <laughs> it's all this territory that originally belong to you. But not no more, Sarah said. <laughs> they've taken all your goods. Movable and immovable, they've taken your possessions. They're robbing, right? Rabbi, rob. <laughs> your dominions, principalities, dukedoms. Kingdoms, plural. They call you enemies, enemies of their anointed. They call you Saracens that they're invading and capturing and vanquishing, right? Robbing, right? <sighs> wow. And a rob. This is the legendary form of the tradition that Catan was the progenitor of the southern tribes or Arab proper, while Ishmaelite Arabs were originally of non-Arab stock. They were not rabbis, man. They were not of this righteous seeds, you know what I'm saying, that was being taught the code and raised up in the code. They were the surrounding families that were jealous of the ones that were rocking directly with the creator. Jealous that they didn't have the blessing of the creator. Got their own gods. Fashioned their own gods. <laughs> Tapped into other energies and mysteries and yada yadas. You know what I'm saying? Fallen energies. Tapped into that. They became musty. They started to stank, man. They became muster rabs, man. Robbing, right? Robbing. Arab genealogists hold Katan to be the first king of Yemen, right? Yemen, Yemen, Yemen. <laughs> so we got on the Afghan, right? <laughs> And how Afghan, we're talking about Jeremiah, right? Afghan, we're talking Jeremiah. Saul, the Benjamite. 
King Saul has a son, Jeremiah, Jeremiah, who has a son, Afghan. These are Benjamites. Before you're talking about an Arab that doesn't look like you, you're talking about the seed of Benjamin, the tribes of Benjamin that looks just like you. These are Arab properties, the original Afghans. Yemen, right? <laughs> Who's the original king of Yemen? They're bombing in Iraq. They're doing all this stuff, war in Afghan. They're still at war with the tribes of Israel. They're just under these titles that we're not understanding. Yemen, Afghan, right? Yemen, Yemen. And the same would be going for all these. We're just focusing on Yemen. Why Yemen? Why Yemen? Who would connect the fact that Yemen, <laughs> first king of Yemen, is Kata? Katan is Joktan, who is the younger son of Eber, Eberu, and these 13 Arab tribes coming out of Eber are not pretenders like the Ishmaelites. who are of non-Arab stock. We're talking Arab proper. We're talking Arab proper. So the Arab propers, which are <laughs> the power, you know, uh, powerful tribes, the, the tribes in power in order, popping off the original Arabs, popping off the original Yemenis, Yemen popping off the Afghans are the propers. Then they adopted the Arab customs, but they had to make it their own. They don't keep our Shabbat, but they keep their own type of Shabbat. They close down on Sundays. <laughs> Intermarrying with our queens, who are genuine Arab. A genuine Arab is an Arab proper, huh? But I'm talking first king of Yemen. And his son, Yarub, is the first person who spoke Arabic, right? <laughs> Which reveals the connection with the Arabic and the Hebrew, but the Arabic is you in its original form, spoken by Joktan's son. Katan's son, who is the first king of Yemen. And after this corporation finished, you know, getting a hold on their indigenous Negroes, Saracens at home, they go other places like uh, Philippines, and, you know, like uh, Vietnam, right? And my dad <laughs> was in that Vietnam War, like a lot of people, people you know, Grandparents was in fighting in some war, you know, uh, drafted and this, this and that, right? So, <laughs> would save my father from, you know, what could have been an early demise in that situation is that he was a trumpet player and could nobody play taps like him <laughs> in his regime. So, instead of having him on the front line, you know, murdering pe poor peoples. <laughs> he was just with his trumpet, and any time his friends died, he had to play that same tap song over and over again till it made him literally damn near out of his mind ball, you know. He had to play tap so many times. His music is what saved his life in that situation. I'm just talking Vietnam, right? What was Vietnam about? Conflict in IET, Haiti about. More Israelite, Saracen, what they call it, uh, vanquishing. Cold War is a CIA proxy war. Well, I wonder. 
who's behind that? <laughs> Afghan, Nicaragua, Nagaragua, the Agua is the Hawa, the water, the water, the Agua is the Hawa, uh, the water, you got that water. The Agua. And then here they go. Here they go in Yemen, right? So we're connecting the Yemen flow. We, we've connected the Afghan flow. It's been a you know, great journey, you know what I'm saying? And I mean, wow. Enemies are holding crafty converts against you, man. They've taken counsel against the most high's treasured one. They have said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. Now Israel is subjugated in perpetual slavery. Kingdoms, dukedoms, principalities now go to the descendants, the successors, right? All for their profit. Hey, by having secured this said faculty, the said King Alfonso, by his authority, Afro said Infante justly and lawfully has acquired and possessed and does possess these islands, boss, these lands, boss. We're talking America, right? Harbors and seas. And they do of right belong to pertain to King Alfonso and his successors. Or are we just talking about descendants? God. Descendants. You know what I mean? So we are descendants of this battle, of this constant fighting. And again, you couldn't have been no slave if you are these people, these Nagas, fighting in the ghost dance war. <laughs> the Sioux Indian War, the Texas Indian War, Eastern Nevada Expedition, you Mexico, Philippines, Texas, Barbary, which is Swan Night Connection. Back to the Shikamaga, right? The corn safe flow. Interesting, man. The same author that we were reading last time. Look at the Kumse flow, the book, the Kumse, and the prophet of the West, right? He's making strong connections, you know, with this Israel Indian <laughs> connection, man. And he's connecting the Israel Indian with obviously America. Here it says the second volume or the Israel era of the history of ancient America. How many of y'all knew there was an Israel era of the history of ancient America before? How many people talking about the Israel era, not the Jewish era? They would have called it that, but this is Israelites. And he didn't go back in the BCs. He went to 1800s, the Comse, Shikamagua, Indian Wars. And in his own slick way, is weaving in the fact that this is Israel, that these are Israelites in the 1800s. So when, I, when I'm talking about, you know what I'm saying, the Comse's war. Other scholars are doing the work for us. <laughs> They've already connected, you know what I'm saying? James Adair has already connected the Indians <laughs> with uh, Israelites. You know, that was one of their, again, famous questions is where did the Israelites uh, go? Where, where were they scattered? And where did you ancient Americans come from? Those were the two major fundamental questions in scholarship period, man. So where did the 12... 12 tribes go and where did the ancient Americans come from like 
like who people the original America and when they combine those questions they realize yo wherever these Israelites were scattered must be the same people that peopled uh, indigenous ancient America so when America realized they've been at war against Israel of course they behind the scenes already know but when the average so-called American that's wearing our title so proudly When they realize what their red, white, and blue was all about the destruction of the most high seed to this day, the curse that comes with that. And, and you're going to see how righteous they really are when it's time to give stuff back and say, yo, we need to give that land back. Hell no, my family been on this land since 1904. Yeah, you, you recent hijack. You must be taking our possessions as descendants you must be following the papal bull doom diverses to a t converting our things to your profit now when it's time to give it back to the righteous when it's time for you to be righteous and give it back will you give it back will you give our things back who's going to help us who's going to assist us who's going to save their own soul because if if you keep all this blood on your hands, that's up to you. If you give it back, perhaps you can have a conversation <laughs> with the most high power. But I don't know. I can't guarantee you that. It's about how you rock it. It's about the code you keep, it, right? Yeah, they, they wanted to convert everything to their profit. Kum say Israel era or the history of ancient America <laughs> to come say in the prophet of the West an historical Israel Indian tragedy by George Jones God it's, must be a tragedy to massacre the seed of Israel the seed of Jerusalem Must be a real tragedy to massacre, massacre Israel, Israelites in real time. Take their lands, call yourselves Americans. Now you're the descendants. And I mean, just dig on this dedication by George Jones. Uh, in the beginning of the book, he says, having therefore received the special permission of your royal highness. To dedicate this historical tragedy to the protection of the Duke of Cambridge. Remember, they stole your dukedom, right? I do so with pride, sanctioned even by humility, feeling assured that should it not meet the full expectations, which an original theme naturally creates, it will be attributed not to any want of enthusiasm, but to the exalted character of the subject. Exalted character of the subject, Managa. This book is called Tecumseh and the Prophet of the West. Israel, Indian Tragedy. So the subject is Israel. The subject is this Israelite priest king. Who is Tecumseh, which is the, you know, main subject of this Israel, Indian Tragedy. <laughs> so who's Tecumseh? Could your invasion have been this recent? Could the invasion of Israel have been this recent, should I say? If I say Indian, yeah, you're like, yeah, the Indians got invaded. And, you know, 1492, Columbus sells the ocean bull. Well, we just went through the 1452 papal bulldog. Ravishing mammals issue Vatican papals, tricking Adam, Adam and Eve to bite the Vatican apple, right? So... 1452, 1492, all the way up into 1812, all through the 1800s, 1900s, they're still going through Indian Wars, which is an Israel problem. It's an Israel Indian tragedy, not a Jewish thing. These aren't Jews that's being rolled up on in America. This is Indians, right? 
Israelites in India Superior. So called America, Asia Major, Grand Tartaria. Does uh, North America exist, Bo? Remember that. Let's go. So he's approaching this with uh, humility, feeling assured that it should not meet the full expectations which an original theme naturally creates will be attributed not to the one of enthusiasm, but to the exalted character of the subject, which like the electric flash, while it illumines, illuminates the darkest caverns of your brain. You remember they, <laughs> my naga, you remember they took the light? Remember that whole Virginia delegates? You know, they, they took the light out of your mind, ball. The light is the dragon. Get pressed to 114, right? So now they're talking about illuminating the darkest caverns of the brain. Often it has the power to blind perception. Yet, if any points of character, human character could arouse the free mind and call forth the brilliant energies of the poet and historian, it is those of patriotism and honor, love of native land. We're talking to cool sex. And its attendant inspiring qualities belong not alone to the plains of Marathon, uh, the Roman form, to the Isles of Alba, Albion, or the hills of Switzerland. I told you they have a crafty council in Switzerland, man. <laughs> they found, they are found in all their pristine powers in the deep forest of the West, my Lord. Where on earth? Are the deep force of the West. Anagata's book is called the Kumse and the Prophet of the West, where in historical Israel Indian tragedy. <laughs> so we're talking Indians, we're talking America, right? We're talking India Superior Bulbs, pristine powers in the deep force of the West. And if Militades, Camillis, Care, Caractacus and Alfred of the glorious William Tell or the glorious William Tell are worthy of the imitation of posterity then to the latest age will live the noble character of Tecumseh of Indiana yeah we're talking Indianapolis right <laughs> we're talking the king of the Indians in Indiana right and remember, we talked about that cube that the Ishmaelites are walking around in Indiana, right? Who's surfing away? Back to the little ice age. <laughs> God. So is this why they put that cube in Indiana? <laughs> so walking around the cube. Now, Ishmaelites are migrating. Arab pretenders are migrating, right? And they what? They ended up joining the Kentuckians because they migrated to Kentucky, Kentucky, right? Con, <laughs> you see clearly it. And they joined against the Kool saying that the Kentuckians are fighting against the Shikamagua and them. All this, man. So the Ishmaelites are coming in to fight against us. And the other jabronis are making treaties of pieces and friendship. Against us, Nagas, man. I think we're beginning. I think we're beginning to see clearly. So this was his dedication. Graced by being permitted to dedicate my fervent illustration of this. Such a chief. To Kumse, The noble character, right? So if he's a noble character, we're talking a righteous con. A righteous con. And he's just giving honor, like, I'm, I'm just honored to, you know, bring this noble character, you know what I'm saying, and this pristine power in the deep forest of the West to your royal highness. I remain in all honor and duty, Prince. And with your permission, with permission, subscribe myself, your royal highness's most trusty and gratefully obliged, George Jones. 1844. 1844. He wasn't over here bull crapping, man. 
Because in 1811, it's the Kumse War. So he's chronicling something fresh in the heart bone of things. As in 1844, we in Texas Indian Wars. Now we got the Kar Kahawa popping off. Joseph in them, right? He's in, the, he's in the midst of the clash, giving us interesting chronicle. And he actually broke it down like a like a like a uh, like a theater type of one, too. It's a great book. Go get the link. You know what I'm saying? But, he'll, you know, he, he breaks it into like a theater flow. <laughs> oh, wow. Let's check this out. The preface, right? <laughs> As this is the first time that in historical tragedy upon the northern aborigines, copper color race is found here, found here, boys, of the western hemisphere has been presented to the European public. Whoa. <laughs> so this is 1844. This is the first time that they're hearing about the truth about what this Tecumseh is representing, not as no savage Indian in savage Indian war, but as Israelites fighting in battle against the hijack. He's painting a picture in 1844, and our own brothers is acting like this is some type of uh, metaphor, mythologies, and oh, you niggas just got the white man's book. <laughs> Man, what? These indigenous people are us. Are you going to fight that? Are you going to fight the code they were keeping? You going to say that they were just black people, part of some black unity, when their own brothers was making treaties of peace and friendship on the Shikamagra, who was separating from these hijacks that wanted to turn back and turn coat and massacre their own people, their own brothers. You want to moor us up today? You want to Islam us up today? And not give us the true, real spill, real drop? 360 degree dragonfly perspective? You want us to get your 33 degrees, huh? Not have our 360. Nah, boss. Nah, boss. <laughs> As this was the first time that an historical tragedy upon the northern aborigines of the western hemisphere has been presented to the European public, as the private know, the term, quote, original, will not be considered misapplied in its title. Hmm. Talking originals. The compounding of the words Israel. Listen up. <laughs> to tell you this story. George Jones has to, he has to bring the two type, he has to bring the words Israel and Indian together. That's what makes this power so pristine when you have a dragonfly perspective as we've all praised the creator been on this wave where these paths meet. We, we've been on these dragon lines. Khan, you you see the receipts, right? You've been surfing the wave since the top of the top, the balcony, right? So we have indigenous truth. We stay on that. We have our Israelite code, our flow. We, we stay talking about our biblical, you know, truth that connects to our indigenous truth, our Tanakh truth, Torah truth, that connects to our indigenous truth with the Mormons like to, you know, split off with and twist up, you know, but they keep the indigenous in play. You know what I'm saying? The Mormons keep these Nephites and Lamanites in play, right? They keep the indigenous America in play. Christians throw it out, right? So <laughs> Christians came in, in the name of Christianity, right? In the name of Jesus to erase all connection. <laughs> of your indigenous connection with your original power, right? So we keep the indigenous truth in play as it 
correlates to the biblical scriptures and codes that was already being kept right here in India Superior. We keep our frequency in flow, you know, 432. We keep that nine flow flowing, you know what I'm saying? And of course, Monaga, we keep our orientation, you know what I mean? It's been no secret. This is how all praise the why. This is how we've been flowing with since the tip top. And if you have learned to flow in a similar uh, cadence, then hello, why? You know what I'm saying? So they are telling you to your face that they combine the words. They've compounded the words Israel and Indian into Israel Indian. <laughs> You can only do that if the Indians are the Israelite. Body bag for the illusion. 1844. This is not me trying to go against the out of Africa theory in 2023. This is 1844. Their people letting you know that these Indians are Israelites. Now you got to say, who's the copper color races found here, boss? Huh? Israel Indian would be more scholastic, but I have preferred the blending of the two words without abbreviation, that the meaning should be instantly understood. For I desire that this composition should be regarded as a link in my chain of, quote, the history of ancient America. This is the link in this scholar's chain to combine Israel and Indian as he investigates the history of ancient America. Can we talk Kalelus now? Can we talk Sylvanus to Texas and the Totex and Israel the third, the fourth, the fifth? Can we talk Romani? You wanna talk great ones? You wanna talk the Mongo flow? We get back in the gang, let's go. I'm just you know, <laughs> connected, man. We, we just connecting. So this scholar has combined Israel, Indian into Israel, 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 Indian, <laughs> like African-American, right? Israel, Indian, more scholastic. Let's be scholastic. Regarding his link. In his chain of the history of ancient America, the link between Tyrian and Israel, errors, so far as the oratory of the latter, latter race is concerned, and which has been alluded to in the volume itself, issue. Israel Indians, right, okay. So let's keep all this in play. We're just talking to Kumsay. Indian, Israel, Indian wars, my nigga. The Kumsay's war, war of 1812. But somebody got a time machine. <laughs> somebody is playing with the timeline. Hmm. Hmm. Somebody got their head nice and high. They are lifting up their head, right? And they that hated thee have lifted up the head. They hold crafty converse against your people and take counsel against your treasured ones. And they have said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation. That the name of Israel, Israel, Indian, Israel, Israel, Indian, may be no more remembrance. You don't know you an Indian and you don't know you an Israelite. Damn. Damn, they did it, y'all. They did it. I got to convince my Nagas that they from here originally because they were just 
found here. We're talking Aborigines, Israel Indian, copper color races, found here by the Europeans. Israel Indian. The Kormsek. Yeah. We got to convince Israel that they're Israel. Not going after the powers of these other tribes. Being adulterous. Because you went a long time without a king. Without a car. But you're supposed to return, Israel. Seek the creator, Israel. Keep the code, Israel. And search for Prester John. Search for King David. Who is an immortal shepherd. One shepherd, Ezekiel 34. One shepherd, Ezekiel 37. Whom I will raise up, Jeremiah 30. Firstborn, Psalms 89. This is who they made the confederacy against, right? Because they consulted together with one consent against you. Do they make a covenant? So we went from our covenant to their covenant. The tents of Edom, the Ishmaelites, the Ishmaelites. Come on, y'all. You're not even Arab proper. Stop it, man. Stop the play play. You're not even of Arab stock. Yeah, you come from Abraham, but that don't make you Arab stock. Arab stock is the righteous stock. The Baruch of the seeds of Abraham. Ishmael still got some Baruch. But he didn't get the Baruch. And this is what it all is, you know, hovering around. They want to fight for the blessings, right? The land. They want to fight you because they hate you. And they hate you because they hate Hawa. They hate the Creator. And they that hated you, that hate you to this day, <laughs> have lifted up their head bombs. And they look just like us, and that's how it popped off with from the top. So for the Mancos bringing this out, you know, really putting the timelines into question as to when all this is happening. And did this Genghis Khan war happen in the 1200s, or is it just happening in the 1800s <laughs> in the Tecumseh War? And the Shikamago War. Because right when this corporation is talking about being independent from Black Britain and Black royalty of Europe, they go to war against the Israelites, against Israel. And who is on the front line, meets them face to face for the first day near 20 years? Come on, it's the Shikamago. The same Shikamago that the Kumse is rocking with. The same Shikamago Dragon Canoe is rocking with. The same group that separated from the greater body because the majority wanted to make treaties. And now you got 1778 Treaty of Pieces and Friendship the headboard of the originals. You know, Roos. Okay, okay. Treaty of Peace and Friendship, was that? Is that 1778? I mean, let's, let's try to be specific here, man. Mm 
Mm. Oh, yeah, it was definitely revised. This Tripoli situation, right? <laughs> See, this got it starting right around 1777, even if it wasn't finalized until 1786, officially. The Treaty of Morocco. More. Wiki got it started in 1777. The Moroccan Sultan Muhammad III included the United States in the list of countries to which Morocco's ports were open. The more with a Hillary Clinton saying, man, man, we, we owe Morocco to giving us first recognition. But this Morocco, even if they were black, weren't your type of black, you know. They were more like this type of black. Holy Roman and Charles V type of black. Hijacking the Inca type of black. They were more like this type of black. Genghis Khan black. You know what I'm saying? <sighs> so the negotiations and all this... Hey, you know, our ports are open to you, friendly business with these Moors, whether we're talking Morocco and Africa or, or that Africa, <laughs> or we're talking about North, West of Maxim, Africa, Morocco here, right? We got maps with Morocco here too, right? Where did it begin? Either way. Either way. Morocco's doing business with the hijack under the Moroccan Sultan Mohammed III. Morocco thus became the first country whose head of state publicly recognized newly independent United States corporation. Now out of this corporation, you got all their alphabet gangs. You got all their boroughs of this, boroughs of that. And this Morocco this Morris shield, they still try to play like they got some some breath in there. Why? How can you be this invaded and still have your Morris treaties being upheld? Unless behind the scenes, they still looking just like you. Come on. Relations were formalized with Moroccan American Treaty of Friendship, which was negotiated by Thomas Barclay at Marrakesh, signed by American diplomats in Europe, Thomas Jefferson, John Adams, with Sultan Mohammed III in 1776. So, start right there. I know it's a lot to digest. December 1777. 1777. If the Moors are making treaties with the United States, being friendly in 1777, as the pinnacle of the Shikamaga Wars popping off. And it, even before 1776, there were already skirmishes, but all these treaties and land being given away, they had enough by then, man. They said, nah, we ain't giving away no more land, man. We ain't giving away no more land, man. So they went up, man. It went up, man. That's when they made their treaties official to strengthen the United States so-called Americans and their revolution, because remember, you're going to be anti-American, right? There's not anti-Semitic in here. You know, I'm sorry. There's it's not anti-Semitic in here. But <laughs> there is Shemitic. Huh?
But of course, now you're talking tribal. Now you're just talking Shem. And if you're not connected by blood to Shem, then you're not Shemetic. They take the H off and you have Semetic. Gotcha. Uh, there's not anti-Semitic, but there's anti-American. <laughs> and to be an anti-American literally means you are anti-revolution in America. Now, that's very generic because depending on what side you're on is your revolution. Them conquering us, invading us, vanquishing us. These Saracens, this is their revolution. Whether they use this credo in 1700s or 1400s, they were making a complete change. A revolution is like a complete change. So they're completely making a complete change, right? By invading, capturing, and vanquishing you, Monaga, Saracens, right? Or just Israel. We're just making an Israel Indian connection, right? Because it's a tragedy. Israel Indian tragedy. But I'm just talking about red, ruddy, copper color you, right? Found here. Uh, anti American will be someone opposed to America. Which means you're opposed to the copper color Nagas found here, bro. So this Papal Bull was anti-American, right? Okay. In their definition of anti-American, they want to talk about the true interest or government of the United States. See, that's the hijack America. And now if you're anti the government, now you're anti-American because the government wants true revolution. In America. But now when we rise up. We have revolutionaries. They're savages. and They just want to take them out. right? Tupac rise up. Try to unite the gangs and the jails. Oh no boss. That's a revolution. Nipsey Hussle rises up. Talking about the marathon. Being independent in the neighborhood. Independent in business. Oh no boss. That's a revolution. They are anti-American. They are anti-revolution in America. Unless the revolution suits them, right? Their interest, their government of the United States. And who's in cahoots with the United States? Morocco. 1777. Which means that they are anti-American. But now, if the Shikamago rises up, if the Kumse rises up for a revolution, are you going to be anti this revolution too? If Nat Turner rises up, if Harriet Tubman rises up, you're going to be anti that revolution too? If these Nagas today in 2023 rise up, are you going to be anti-American boss? With your treaties... Are you going to be anti-Shem? Will you be anti uh, a cop of color racist? Found here with originals. That's what we want to know. That's what the tribe is trying to figure out. Are you anti our revolution? <laughs> Or just uh, you want to support your own treaties. Gang is convicted as a black man, right?
So again, the invasion of the Tartars and the Mongols as the unification of Russia under the rule of Novgorod, Yaroslav dynasty of Georgia or Genghis Khan. Then comes in Batu Khan and who they call Ivan Kalita, which is the same thing. So getting a piece of this, let's go. Above, we have already referred to the invasion of the Tartars and the Mongols as to the unification of Russia. See our analysis of the report written by a Hungarian missionary and contemporary of the events in question. This epic, the first half of the 14th century, okay, 1300s, is the furthest we can trace documented history of Russia. It's the furthest they can trace documented history of the Rus is the early 1300s, my noggin. Okay. <laughs> Genghis Khan invades President John 1202, they say. And the furthest they can go back to trace documented Russian history is the early 14th century, 1300s, after the compensation of the centenarian chronicle or chronological shift inherent in Russian history and discovered by the authors. The situation in Russia has largely resembled the chaos of independent principalities that had reigned over the entire Western Europe with larger state stately structures emerging therefrom. This process began in Russia, the first center to unite all the other Russian principalities around it had been Rostov the Great. Let us relate our reconstruction in more detail. Let's go. 2.1. Genghis Khan, Georgia. Right? So I just want to kind of put some light on why we keep seeing this Georgia pop up when we research King David, and Prester John and all that. Now, it could be connected with Georgie Genghis or the original George or Georgie, which is a George connected with the Hebrew Israelite flow. You know, Genghis is not the first George, right? He's taking these titles. So don't just think George, George bad. Now, George is also a title and also has righteous kings connected to the title George. Genghis, right? They say they can only trace documented Rush history to the early 1300s. And here you have early 1300s, 1302, Exilarch David, the sixth Solstein of Babylon and George, right? Now, has this any connection with Georgia Genghis? We're talking Babylon. They're Exilarchs in captivity. These are the leaders during captivity. Who's captivity? Are we just talking Georgie, right? Okay. His origin, his original in the 14th century is Yori or Georgie Danilovich of Moscow. And Moscow is also another der derivation of Moses or Moshe, Moscow, Moses. All this connects back to the Mosok, the founder, Bezitian flow, or, you know, Cappadocia flow, Kazaria flow, original Hebrew cons, you know what I'm saying, located in these Asias, right? So, 1318, the great prince, Georgi Danilov, Danilov, <laughs> Danilovich equals Genghis Khan. This is their theory. I'm just surfing away with these, you know, uh, chronographers, chronology, you know, uh, <laughs> chronology experts. All right, so 1318, the great prince Georgie Danilovich Genghis Khan ascended to the Rostov throne in the territory that would later become Vladimir and Zud Dal Rusha. His phantom duplicates are Prince Georgie Veselovidovich from the alleged 13th century Yuri. Dolgoroki of Rostov in the alleged 12th century. Mustalov Odalal, doing my best, the daring brother and co ruler of Yaroslav the Wise in the alleged 11th century. 
guy. So Georgi Danilovich, Genghis Khan initiates the unification of Russia. He captures the Volga region first, proceeds to move to the west step by step. The details of this conquest aren't known to us all that well, but their significance isn't all that great. Romanovian historians have stretched this period of conquest over several decades. It had become a great deal shorter. In reality, the above-mentioned evidence from the part of the Hungarian observer is a lot more realistic chron chronologically and makes more sense. In general, the unification process in question is known to us nowadays as the, quote, invasion of the Mongols and the Tartars from the east. However, it must have looked like that to the chroniclers from western Russia. Russia. Apparently, the Russian chronicles that had served as originals for the ones that have reached our age were of Polish or Ukrainian origin. It is a known fact in general that many Russian chronicles demonstrate distinct signs of the southwestern Russian dialect. One must pay attention to the fact that the old Russia, this is why we spent so long talking about Russia and the Rus. So when I say Rus, you know what I'm talking about. The old Russian coat of arms, right? Used to depict St. George the Conqueror. Whoa. <laughs> Hardly surprising considering how George, Georgie, a.k.a. Genghis Khan, had indeed been the founder of the great equals Mongolian Russian Empire. And now we can put it together. What the roots look like. What Genghis is looking like. Why they would call themselves the great ones. In this Indian Israel tragedy. The treaties that are popping out 400 years later, <laughs> still connecting them with the hijack. And to Kumse, say, whom the hijack is being confederate against, Psalms 83. And the Shikamagwa, who's separating from the greater body of the Cherokee. Who wish to make peace? What kind of peace? <laughs> Treaties of pieces and friendships. Got it. Got it. They wish to make peace. And their peace means war. This is out the Yale Law School Library. <laughs> their treaties of peace <laughs> it meant war man this is disgusting man we've read it plenty of times I'll leave it for you to read this is their treaty the prisoners are not to be made slaves right so they can and jam you up all day, but they can't enslave each other. So this was their Moorish shield. Like it shields us from being enslaved in your jails today because we're not supposed to be made slaves according to our treaty. And you have to honor it because we helped you take out the Kumse. We helped you take out the Shikamagwa. You got to honor this treaty. This is horrible, man. All they do is come to each other's aid. If either party shall be at war with any nation, whatever, hey, Israel, whoever, take a prize belonging to that nation, there shall be found on board subjects or effects belonging to either parties. The subjects shall set at liberty and the effects return to the owners. And if any goods, <laughs> come on, man. The other party shall not take a commission from that enemy, nor fight under their colors. 
So these Moors couldn't help you today to fight against the hijack if they wanted to because they're still under the treaties of peace with the enemy. This is how you sleep with the enemy. This is how you make peace with the enemy. The Shikamaga separated from these hijacks that wanted to make peace and friendship. So this group of so-called black people separated from the rest of these blacks that wanted to make black ass treaties to this day. How much bloodshed is responsible because of your treaties with the enemy? Who let the doors open and who let the dogs out? How much bloodshed did you cause? You let them do all this, man. You let the doors open, man. These Seminole Wars, these Seminole were fighting side by side with the Kumse. So were the Creeks. So you see these Creek Wars, these were still the allies of the Kumse and Shikamagwa, man. How much bloodshed with your treaties did you cause all this indigenous copper colored cons fighting for righteousness in the Israel Indian tragedy in ancient America? Now they're in Mexico because of you. Now they're in the Philippines because of you. I'm not gonna, they in Vietnam and Korea because of you. They in Afghanistan, they in Yemen <laughs> because of you. Fighting against the Arab proper. Tribes of Benjamin. The Afghan flow. And they cut it off here, but we can keep going, right? We can keep it going. 2023, we can keep it going. The war on drugs was against you. Yeah. All this brutality every day against the Nagas, man. Now they want to talk about Nagas being kidnapped in Mexico just just so that you don't even think about going to Mexico, right? No, they don't want you even think about crossing the border. They want you to scare you to death <laughs> when you can find peace in Shalom in Mexico. Some Nagas do every day. They, they want to spin it through the media to create more fear of you leaving, right? <laughs> so that they can keep you Hey, keep that war on terror on your on your backside, man. Yeah, keep them proxy wars in your face, ball. They're the invaders. They're the ones in they're the ones invading Mexico, man. <laughs> they want to scare you about the Mexico cartels, man. They're the they're the invaders, man. And it's been like that. I said it's been like that. The great Mongol equals great Mongol great. So it's the battle of the greats. More is also great. I want more. I want a greater amount. The Mongol is the great. The more is the great. <laughs> But who's the real Mongol and who's the real great? And who's the real Rus, Rus of Russia? Huh? Who's the real America? Who's the real Arab? You get all your titles back, my naga. Who's the real Roman Romani? Not this jabroni. Nah, not this jabroni. Nah, boss, nah. Let's, go. Let's skip ahead a little bit. And you got the drop, take your time, because you can do a lot of recon with this Anatoly for the Manco drop. And you can get love to Aqua Tide. All the via all the volumes of the Anatoly for Manco books, I believe all of them 
are in the drop library for free at 432thedrop.com. A-Hop, Aqua Type S-I, the record key. Let me get this from here, man. I'm just checking out how they're comparing this Novgorod, Moscow, to Petersburg and Odessa in the United States. What kind of connection is that, my Nagas? <laughs> okay, okay, okay. The legend about the summoning of the princes also reflected the vision of the Mongolian. Again, they put great. Every time they got Mongo, they got great, right? So you know what it is. Rusha into three parts. So three parts. Press of John, Emperor of the Three Indias, right? The great, the golden horde, blue horde, and the white horde. Horde means order. Order. The golden order, blue order, white order, right? The legend in question relates this event as the division of the state. Between the three brothers, Rorik the Elder, Cineus, and Travul. The propos could, a propos could this name, Cineus, be a reflection of the blue horde, seeing how the Russian word for blue is Sinai, like Mount Sinai. Huh? <laughs> okay. Uh, it says Genghis Khan or Georgie was killed in the battle at River Sit, S I T T, which was nonetheless won by his Tartar troops. His brother Batu Khan, right, who was supposed to be the one stabbing, doing the stabbing. <laughs> and this art drop, that's supposed to be Batu stabbing the Rus, right? Gangs kind of picked it as a black man, has a non black brother. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay, boss. Khalif. That's where they're getting the Khalifa title. And now you got the Sultan, Khalifs, and all these Khalifs coming out the Muslim flow. And you got Genghis Khan with this crescent situation here, right? And you say, how does he relate to Moab in there? Because in Preston John Legend in the sources, it says he comes from Moal, M-A-O-M-O-A-L. And I said, just change the L to a B. <laughs> yeah. Now we might be able to see what the Holy Roman Emperor Charles V has to do with Genghis Khan. And the Moabites or the Edomites, hey, it don't matter, man, because... The tents of Edom, Ishmaelites, Moab, hey, it don't matter, man. They're all confederate against you. Yeah. All the children of Lot, they want a lot. They want more. They want to be great. They make their own covenant against the treasured ones of Hawaii. They make the covenant. And we remember ours. Because Hawaii say, I made a covenant with my chosen. I have sworn unto David, my servant. Forever will I establish your seed. <laughs> Forever I have found David, my servant. I have chosen one exalted. Exalted one chosen out of the people. I have found David, my servant, with my holy oil have I anointed him. This is why the covenant is forever, because Hawaii anointed David directly. He going to call me father, my power, the rock of my salvation, not JC, Hawaii. And I will appoint him firstborn. 
firstborn bond, highest of the kings of the earth. Are you seeking or are you stuck in idolatry? Are you stuck in some doctrine, some religion? We're not speaking on religion. Get out the religion. I'm speaking about connecting to the creator. And we can go in the script. We can see what's happening outside of it. We can see they're being confederate. We can see their treaties of peace and friendship right on the head bone of the Shikamagwa who separated from those that wish to make peace with these fake ass Americans, not the real ones, because we're not anti-American. We're not anti-copper color racist, <laughs> but they're anti your revolution. Pastor John, King David is the firstborn. Highest of the kings of the earth. Forever will I keep for him my mercy and my covenant, because they got their covenant. But my covenant shall stand fast with him and his seed will I make to endure forever. His throne as the days of heaven. No longer can they take your kingdoms, dukedoms, principalities into forever perpetual slavery we don't go with their forever we don't go with their covenant we go with Hawa's covenant we're one shepherd one chosen firstborn con of cons rex negus yeah man his seed will I make endure forever see we rock with Hawa's forever man we rock with Hawaz forever. Hawaz throne as the days of heaven. We rock with Hawaz forever. We don't rock with their perpetual slavery. We don't rock with their forever. We rock with Hawaz forever. That the seed will endure forever. This invasion band in play. They're Georgie. Connected with the Prester. They're Georgia. Right? The Prester's sons were in the midst of this. David's father is a David, man. <laughs> Husband of Hannah. Huh? Anna. Moshe David, let's talk about it. <laughs> right. Prester John. Uh, David. Lady Hannah. That's married to Prester John. Right. We just got that. On this timeline, same timeline, but different titles, it says David the First. So, <laughs> Lady Hannah is married to David the First. Lady Hannah is married to Preston John. And their son is Exilarch David, as well as Hanan and Salimah. They also have the son Hanan, but it brings in the daughters, Princess Dara and Princess Lambu. Rabadi Gadi Mani. And we talked about the connection with the Queen Tamar and the Lembu flow, a connection with Miriam, <laughs> whose son is Joshua, that they've incorrectly put Jesus in the Quran, or excuse me, Isa. They turn him into J.C. in the New Testament. Mary and J.C. When you have Miriam and Joshua or Issa being validated even in the Quran. And this Anna is Hannah. But who's Dora? Or Dora the Explorer? 
These are daughters of the Prester, man. Lady Dragon's on the wall. So when we talk about Batu Khan, the Genghis Khan invasion, and we get into the Kang and time travel drop, the quantum flow, you just see that you're talking about the house, high tech, high tech house, and there's a lot at stake, man. It's the greatest world war you never heard of. Not their chump change, World War One and Two. I'm talking the real world wars, Game of Thrones, man. The name Batu must be a der derivative of the word Batka, father. The word Batka is used by the Cossacks for their Atamans. And we got also in that $1,000 book, uh, Medieval History of the Israelites, man, Robert Grisham book that, yeah, Khan father was what they call Prester John, the Khan father. And then who stole that title? Yeah, Georgie, man, Genghis, man. Now, he's the Khan father, or Godfather, right? Who's the real Khan father? Czar is another way of, you know, saying this Khan title. So, when you have a Khazarian, Khazar, don't give him that Czar, man. You, you tripping, man. These so-called whites are not no Khazars. They're not no Czars. They're not no Ka Czars. When you know the Ka is the dragon, man. <laughs> They're not no dragon kings. <laughs> this ain't their house. This ain't their bot. This ain't their bot too. They're not the father. <laughs> they they ain't the pappy. You can't give them nothing. And yeah, we're going to come back to this Ivan Kalita. See what it got to do with Khalifa. Amazing, right? Russians fighting Russians, man. More on more war. Oh, There's a lot to dig on, but, you know, we're going to get a little bit out of time, man. It's whew, so much work, man, in this drop. But I think we're beginning to see clearly, my mind. Back to the return of the dragons of wisdom. <laughs> we know we ain't talking no snake. So we must be talking dragons, but let's see how they bring this in, you know, to this Lemuria Atlantis and we'll dodge all the little thoughtisms in between. All right. So during the time of Lemuria and Atlantis and especially just before and during their respective destructions, the early serpents of wisdom led migrations of culture bearing colonists from the twin motherlands to predetermined locations upon the Earth's surface. In these virgin areas, they established colonies and founded new dragon empires. Now, just keep Genghis Khan time traveling. <laughs> keep the Kang in mind, all right? Because we'll get back to the quantum flow, but keep the Kang in mind, all right? <laughs> so they go into these virgin areas. They established colonies, founded new dragon empires, and based upon the civilizations they had left behind. All right, many of the Lemurian colonists migrated to the areas surrounding the Pacific Ocean, <sighs> i.e. the Pacific Rim. Then, for thousands, thousands of years, the settlements they established reflected the ancient Lemurian spirituality, its artistic sensitivity, and its predilection for harmonizing with the universal will. So this Lemurian spirituality, just just off of just observation, seems like they're connected with an ancient code. And this Atlantean is coming straight, hijacked Poseidon, Atlas. You know, this is where the Egyptian dynastic, you know, pharaohs or the suits are coming right out of this Atlantean flow. They know it, right? So this harmonizing with the universal will seems to be keeping Hawa's code just off of first glance, right? So many of the Atlantean colonists migrated to the continental land masses surrounding the Atlantic and spawned empires based upon the exaltation or exalting of the intellect as well as the spiritual principles espoused by the K 
Kyle Boroy, K A B E R O I, Serpents of Wisdom. So they had their own dragons, right? <laughs> Gang has got his own dragons. They got their own dragon, giving them their own wisdom, right? They got their intellects, but remember, they're eating the dragon and <laughs> the Ethiopians in Western Europe. The more back to the more and more war, they're literally eating the dragons to get more intellect. They're eating the dragon to get, you know, to go against the accidents of old age, as they say. <clears throat> Shalak, so they're going against accidents of old age by eating the dragon. In real time. They eat the dragon, they get more intellect, and now they got more wisdom. Now, from first glance, it looks like the Atlanteans really wanted to exalt their intellect. By slaying the dragon, eating the dragon. <laughs> They're not trying to harmonize with the universal will. They want to exalt the intellect as superior, right? They want to play with technology. They want to conquer the power of the sun and make weapons of mass destruction. <laughs> Some of the post-Atlantean cerebral, uh, cerebral cultures they engendered produce sophisticated technologies like quantum weapons, quantum time travel, which could effectively control the earth and all her inhabitants. Now you're talking about the apple of Eden, right? The ability to control free will that they're talking about in their TV shows and all that. This golden this apple, the apple of Eden. Okay. Okay, you think it's play, play. You think it's play, play, boss. <laughs> According to the legend, before permanently departing from their motherland, the Atlantean serpents of wisdom were instructed by their grandmaster, King Votan III, the last reigning monarch of the House of Votan, to take with them the distinguishing trademarks of their ancient organization and utilize them in their new lands. These, these exclusive markings included the serpent sacred esoteric name their cer ceremonial dress and their traditional serpentine symbol symbology so now you got this cobra snake egypt you know what i'm saying now they're they're all about the snake now <laughs> not the dragon because they're eating the dragon they're really at war against the dragon so they take on like a forked tongue snake would they got a forked tongue right <laughs> alchemical serpent, alchemical dragon. Serpent can mean dragon, serpent can mean snake. They take on the snake, man. They take on the snake in Egypt. That's their thing, <laughs> not the dragon. King Voltan also advises people to wear a version of the royal volcanic crown of the fire serpent uh, with the tuft of feathers at the top simulating smoke. Mm. <laughs> During their sacral sacred ceremonies and included with their new tribal names the sound of Ka. So they are now like it's brand new. New lands. They got a new tribal names with the sound of the Ka. That's Atlantis. These other, you know, tribes already had their foundation. These people were making new tribal names, like using the sounds like Ka, Ko, as well as the letter K, the timeless denominations of both wisdom and serpent so again back to that ka right is the dragon and they're now hijacking the sound which is the frequency merkaba ka america ka <laughs> for ages ka or k had been an ancient seed sound of the primal serpent's various name ka <laughs> right in your face, bone. And now you can, not only does Khan mean priest, or I agree in the most priestly fashion, the most priestly vibration, I agree, but we're talking about the dragon, the, the wisdom itself. I agree in the wisest form, man. I, <laughs> we're talking about the wisest, we're talking about. Uh, the wise counsel and the stories, right? 
old king renowned for wise counsel, wisdom. You're talking about the Ka, the Ka, Karu, or the cherub. Right, they like to connect the angel seraphim and then the cherubim. But the cherubim, is it cherubim, C-H? Or is it a hard K? Cherub, right? Kara. Kara. Katan, right? <laughs> Kara Katan. Kathe. Khan. And have been incorporated into the name of the dragons. They keep saying serpents. Atlantean organization, the Kabari. Finally, in one last parting request, Voltan advised the migrating serpents of wisdom to gather together at the end of each cycle, 104 year cycle, to share the wisdom they had acquired during this cycle. This 104 year cycle constituted a microcosmic counterpart to their larger 104,000 year grand cycle. And what is that all about? Yeah, so we can't talk more without talking Morocco. We talk Morocco, you're talking North Africa. And we know we're also talking Northwest Africa when we talk America. But leading up to their final audience with King Voltan, many of the servants of wisdom had traveled to North Africa and the Mediterranean, where as seafaring traders called Atlantides, they had established trading posts and colonies. So now we're talking Morocco. <laughs> Following their final farewells to their beloved king, many Atlantean serpents permanently resettled within these eastern colonies. In obedience to Voltan, once the transplanted Atlantid serpents were established in their new colonial lands, they quickly adopted the serpentine names they desired to be henceforth known by. One branch of serpents took for themselves the serpentine name Karin, or pronounced Karayan. Karayan, the R in Karayan, was a secret sound syllable which denoted the Atlantean fire god, and Eon was the name for the sea. Like Ania? Uh oh. Uh oh, ball for the dismount. <laughs> like Ania. We're talking about the water. Huh. Altogether, the three parts of the name denoted the serpent sea people of the Atlantean fire god. Another branch of serpents became known as the Uskara, E-U-S-Kara, huh? Still in that Kara title, right? And Preston John, he's the chief of the Kara Kata, Cathay, Kata, with the C pronounced as a K, Ka. <laughs> Yeah, Us, Us, Kara carries a similar meaning to the to that of Karion. The third branch of serpents refer to themselves as the Torox or the Turks. Huh? Huh? Yeah, you know, the, the Moors claim to be the Turks, right? <laughs> Same flag and everything, right? So a name which translates into the serpent people of all glorious fire god. Okay, historically, the Karyan, Uskar, and Torak people are known as the Phoenicians, Bas, the Toregs, respectively, <coughs> or the Moor. <laughs> Let's go. After adopting the serpentine, serpent name of their choice, many of the transplanted transplants, that's the key word, because they're hijacks, Atlantis. Further revealed their serpentine affiliations by tattooing snakes <laughs> or dragons, which one, man, on their bodies or emblazoning them along the shafts and handles of the swords and daggers. So we're finding all these swords with Hebrew and dragons coming out of Arizona, Kalelus. You understand? This is old Atlantis, this is old Lemurian. These are high tech, high technology weapons. They also sailed in dragon shaped vessels and covered themselves in snakeskin armor before going into battle. Huh? <laughs> A lot of drive, man. 
I like to come and dibble and dabble in this one, man. Like too many mine, you know. I, I like to just get a little here, a little there, man. Here, a little there, a little man. Who's this guy, man? A crown da dancer, dancer. <laughs> Okay, ancient North Africa. Okay. So then they got Canaan, right? <laughs> During the time of the Torah, settled North Africa territories, other branches. So when I say Torahs, we're just talking about the Turks, right? <laughs> other branches of the serpent, Atlantis, simultaneously established colonies around a group of landlocked lakes and inland seas which existed in the area of what is now the Mediterranean Sea. One branch of these Atlantides were the Tyranians. And like the Aqua Tire, we really gotta dig with the <laughs> these Tyranians, man, you know, and the Marvel flow back to the quantum, man. So remember, Tyranians, Quantum, Marvel. I'm just gonna kinda put that separately here. Uh Quantum. Hope I spell it right. Tyranians. Okay. Marvel. Do. -do, -do. Spell it wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me get that. Did it bring me right back to Kang? <laughs> Tyrain explorers on the planet Arthros in the negative zone. Now, Ty Battle didn't drop so much drop on these Tyranians, man. So, you see how we naturally get right back there. And we're just talking quantum. And I'll leave this for the dismount, but. <sighs> Annie Hillis. Annie Hillis. Anna or Hannah, man? <laughs> Annihilation and the hill is in the living death that walks alien supervillain from Marvel Comics classic recurring enemy of the Fantastic Four Guardians of the Galaxy Galaxy usually serving as the main villain of story arcs including the negative zone right we're just talking quantum and sometimes arcs that are not such as when he later becomes a threat to the entire universe as the main antagonist of the storyline annihilation where he commanded the annihilation wave and then do 5g i don't know man and later he becomes the main villain of the thanos trilogy okay Oh yeah, Aqua Tibeza. <laughs> we getting a lot closer to this negative zone drop and this whole Tyranian flow. We're going to keep that one up because I know we got, it's a lot to dig on. Okay. 
Okay, okay. Let's get back in there. So any connection that we're getting man with time to travel, uh, Marvel, you know what I'm saying? Tyrenian connection. Tyree connection. <laughs> oh, man, hold up right quick. Let me. I got to do it. <laughs> aqua tie, I got you, aqua tie. I got you. you know, I, I got to make aqua tie happy. I was spelling a Tyranians. It was supposed to be Ty Annans, Ty Annans. <laughs> she was like, Ty Annans drop. <laughs> Ty Annans, man. All right. Come on, man. Don't be no hijack now, man. We out of here, boss. <laughs> Ty Annans. Ty Annans. The Tyanans was the only indigenous intelligent life forms in the extra dimensional realm known as the negative zone. Okay. They appear to be humanoid like lion people, right? Like the lions of Judah <laughs> with fur covering their body, uh, long mane around their heads. The Tyanians, Tyanians were a highly advanced race, proud and arrogant about their achievements. Okay. We're going to tie this back in with Lemurian Atlantis. Just getting a little here, a little there, a little. Get all these hijacks out the way, man. Marvel comes with a lot of hijacks. <laughs> all right. Highly advanced, right? We're talking Lemuria Atlantis, right? Proud of their achievements. Tried to reach the heights declined in other species. They built huge factories that produced seeds of life, living spores, and sealed gold power boats so they can survive a journey to the seed of stars so they're in boats going to the stars huh? <laughs> they explore the negative zone to the utmost limits mapping worlds in which it seemed capable of supporting life now I'm sure you're asking what on earth plane is the negative zone Great question, boss. Could we just talk in quantum? No one in our universe knows how or when a negative zone appears. Mm. Nobody knows <laughs> when the negative zone appeared or came to be or how old it is. If it's Aging process is similar to ours. Similar to our universes, it is much older. Is it much older? It has begun, already begun to contact and will eventually implode at one time. There were several species that flourishing cultures and made progress in science and the arts. So they're talking about, <coughs> excuse me, eventually implode <coughs> like a big crunch instead of the big bang. So this negative zone is like contracting. It's just imploding. It reminds me of Admiral Byrd in that interview saying, you know, the world is shrinking with an ever consistency or something like that. Like it's constantly shrinking. Very, very uh, interesting, right? So. 
All right, the people of Tyana, shout out to Aqua Tapeza, <laughs> for instance, use spores to terraform other worlds and produce many other many of the species now known to live there. The negative zone is an alien universe with several characteristics that distinguish it from our own. First and more it's entirely of antimatter. Ain't that what they're trying to get in CERN, the antimatter man? And then anti man go to war with Preston John. Or oh, I'm so, I'm sorry, with the uh, Blue Marvel. Now we blue marvel in the game, my jig. Natural by law, take the wheel. Anybody, anything that moves from one universe to the other must reverse its polarity on a molecular level or be instantly annihilated. Second, it is a mature universe that has already started to contract. Ours is still expanding. Eventually, it will implode. Third, time passes at a faster rate relative to ours. Fourth, a still unknown factor, possibly lacking a lack of water, makes evolution difficult because much of the negative zone is still uninhabited. The best known beings from the zone include Anahilis and Blastar. Okay. Yeah, that's just a little, you know what I mean? <laughs> Here a little, there a little, as we make our dismount. Blood the Aqua Taj, she's been dropping on this negative zone in these Tyannins. Annins like Anion, Anna like Hannah. I got you, Aqua Tide. No, it gets deeper. <laughs> Redevelop the new generator for converting any negative energy into positive so he could escape the vortex. The generator is activated. A pulse of energy emitted into the vortex. One was identified by beings of power as Blazar and his chief rival, Ana, Ana Helis who tried to investigate and use it for their own plans and conquest. The post also attracted the attention of the Fantastic Four, who went to investigate its potential threat to both the positive and negative universes. Any truth to this? Uh, when they talk about going into the metaverse, They clashed between all the all three parties. They entered into an uneasy alliance in order to investigate the energy of the pulse within the vortex. All were quickly conquered by the Tyannins under the control of the evil Reed Richards from Counter Earth, seeking to conquer both the positive and antimatter universes. The evil Richards then took them to escape to attack Blastar's homeworld of Balor Bal Balor <laughs> planning to obliterate the planet Brute then prepared to lead the Tyannins against Earth yeah the Fantastic Four and their Earth's allies soon broke free in the battle and battled Brute and his army all the while the Tyannins tried uh, to destroy the barrier between the universes. However, Mr. Fantastic had theorized that the energy field that protected the Tyannis in a negative zone only worked for a limited time, so the attack delayed things long enough for the fields to wear off and the Tyannis to be shunted back to their home in the vortex. Yeah, man, yeah, man. Yeah, we're going to talk some more about this negative zone, quantum, these Tyannis, man. I like that. I like that time as well. Especially when we just talking about, you know. Tyannis. Huh? <laughs> we're talking Lemurians. We're talking Atlantis. Tyrenians. <laughs> Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And 
Atlanta. Atlantis. Carians or Phoenicians, a tribe which eventually migrated to Canaan, pronounced Kana, Ka, with Ka, K, of the dragons, <laughs> a territory on the Asia Minor coast. So what about, what about Asia Major? Which can be translated as land of the fire serpent, fire dragon balls. Let's get it. You know you see maps with the fire dragon right here in China, man. Right here in Cathay. Once settled in Canaan, the Carians or Phoenicians set up altars to the Kabori twin, symbolic representations of their Atlantean forefathers of Atlantis. Hijack, hijack, hijack city. They got their idols straight away. They also sailed through the mid Mediterranean in ships with Patasi images of Vulcan as a fire god Pata back to Egypt, back to Atlantis, attached to their prows, thus designating themselves to be serpent sea people of the fire god. Yeah, it's got Game of Thrones all over it, right? Other branches of the Atlantis who sailed down the Mediterranean Valley or across the Triton Sea, Poseidon Sea, Atlas Sea, right? Atlas is the son of Poseidon, Ka, to found colonies along the Nile River. Egypt <laughs> are, also, are known in history as the Egyptians. <laughs> so Egyptians, Atlantis, Ping Pao, serpent, dragon, or snake. Ping Pao. Ooh, then they go into the lineage of Thoth. Yeah, and they go right to the first Egyptians, to their North African homeland, or a lineage of Atlantean serpents of wisdom. So historically, they are known as the Thoth Hermes serpent masters and referred to in old Egyptian texts as the god Thothibor, Dahuti, Jedi. Now we're talking Judah. The real Jedi, the real proper, the A rabbi. And they say the DJ means serpent, huh? <laughs> or does the Jedi mean dragon, huh? Huh? The androgynous serpentine nature, right? Androgynous keeps popping up, man. And when you go to the alchemical serpent, because there is a dragon, but when you go to the Serpent, which can't be the dragon, <laughs> not an alchemy, man. When you go to the serpent, you find androgyny. Androgyny. Image of the union of king and queen as a single androgyny. Now you got the Baphomet, right? The Mohammed Baphomet flow coming straight out of this thought situation which lets you know that this Thoth situation is the original serpent, which can't be the dragon, so stop playing. When we say dragon, we ain't talking about no snake. We ain't talking about no serpent. We ain't talking about no androgyny. We're talking about framer and shaper. We ain't talking about no unconscious bursting into consciousness. We're talking about our singularity. <laughs> the conscious, cons coming back to life. Valley of dry bones. Woo! Yeah, reflections, duplications. They're impersonal by nature. We got hijacked and have to come back into consciousness. They are unconscious by nature. Androgyny? God. They're androgyny. This androgynous serpentine, and the serpent is not the dragon nature of these adepts was reflected in the Egyptian glyphs of Thoth's symbolic animal, the Ibis, 
which was a dual bird with both black and white coloring. Black and white because they're opposites. And what do you know about opposites? Anaga? The opposites is how you slay the dragon. Only the act or the product of Connie and Shio, the coming together of opposites, black and white, Thoth, black and white, can slay the alchemical dragon. And the same dragon that what? Is the vessel which the spirit is contained. This is how they steal your soul. Spirit, the soul, because the vessel in which the soul is contained is your dragon body. And they have to bypass that with the creation of the coming together of opposites. So they create your opposites and they send them over here as straw men and you call them white people. But white means pure or white means demon, W-I-G-H-T, coming together of opposites. Fork tongue language, English, con now means pros and cons, bad, or con is the American, coming together of opposites. Black and white checkerboard, black and white, dual, duality, black and white coloring, coming together of opposites, duality, alchemical serpent yeah man now we're talking duality that brings everything to life but also kills everything boss it is the act of the conientio bringing together of opposites that's when this snake this serpent this dog-headed sign of Sephala. That's the symbolism. That's the androgyny. The coming together of opposites. Their duality. Because how else can you bring everything to life and kill everything at the same damn time? At the same damn time. That's the serpent. Huh? That's thought in them, man. That's why we say it is straight up hijack. And who's this? Who's these Lemurian flows? Who's rocking out this Pacific flow? What is Moshe connected to? What's the ancient ways which they call being harmonious with the universal uh, spirit, universal will? That's the that's Hawa. That's the code. But we'll get some more, man. You know, <laughs> as we continue our investigation. Hey, allow why? <laughs> I always try to keep it under two now, but I'm going to start with one goal at a time. Let's just try to keep it under three, man. <laughs> three hours just flows so easily and so effortlessly when you're surfing the way and you got that, that wall. Allow why? Covered a lot of drive by Nagas. We've been talking double slit experiments for a long time. The power of observation, the power of being a witness, literally changes the behavior of the particle at the most molecular of levels. Particles change behavior when they're being observed from being a full wave pattern to being one finite possibility. They've turned our observation through their lens. They're all seeing I. We're now witnessing through that our destruction as the finite possibility, our perpetual 
captivity is now the only finite possibility observing through the hijack lens but when you start to observe the law of the creator the code exodus 20 got you in code no more idolatry most high over everything now you're observing through the creator's lens man the true all seeing now you can witness paradise deuteronomy right yeah man Now you can witness paradise instead of your destruction. Which lens do you choose to witness? Perpetual slavery or forever covenant? Forever will I keep for him my mercy. My covenant shall stand fast with him. His seed also will I make to endure forever. Who, oh who, is Prestiger? <laughs> who got the drop on the fountain of you? Forever con, so. We got a lot more to talk about out of Presser John Legend and sources. How they be playing with the dragons, man. <laughs> how that's a part of your your culture. You know what I'm saying? Your indigenous flow forever. Copper dragon, bronze dragon. <laughs> got that dragon breath, man. <sighs> nah, man. I, I'm going to stay most high over everything, boss. <laughs> the water to the cons, man. You know, hey, if you get in before the Shabbat, get it in and continue to rock the frequency. <laughs> rock with the cons, you know what I'm saying? And after Shabbat, keep popping off my jigger, our amazing designer, owner of MHOE, you know, we popping it off for you. What's your flow? What's your swag, my nugget? <laughs> hey. Either way, you popping off, man. Fruit Phoenix, man. <laughs> con up, man. You popping off, con. My jig is keeping it flowing. MHOE is right in your face, bomb. So. MHOE, man, you know, we're going to continue to build our land and use these proceeds to build for Naga Fields. So, we get, you know, it's getting real creative around here, man. My Jigga, we got the embroidery popping off, man. And we want to represent, you know, the water for my Naga is already, you know, popping off with us, man. Uh, supporting Joy World, click the links below. MHOE, the bucket flow, this is all embroidery, man. It's all happening. The patches, the beautiful con designs, man, most high were everything. <laughs> For the droplets. <laughs> droplets love MHOE, man. The droplets love the most high over everything. Wear your patches, man. Wear them proudly. And keep surfing the wave with a con. Continue to be the one with the deadly glance. They've tried to take the light from another. They tried to leave us in perpetual darkness. But we see, <laughs> we see clearly, Khan. There's only one way time travel could be possible, man. <laughs> okay, man. We'll, we'll get to this gang flow. It's only one way, man. Our modern understanding of time. 
And causality comes from general relativity, theoretical physicist Albert Einstein's theory combines space and time into a single entity, space-time, and provides a remarkable, intricate explanation of how they both work at a level unmatched by any other established a theory. This theory has existed for more than 100 years and has been experimentally verified to extreme high precision so physicists are fairly certain it provides an accurate description of the causal structure of our universe for decades physicists have tried to use general relativity to figure out if time travel is possible it turns out that you can write down equations that describe time travel and are fully compatible compatible or excuse me compatible and consistent with relativity but physics is not mathematical and equations are meaningless if they do not correspond in reality. All the matter we see in our daily lives has positive energy. Matter with negative energy is not something you can just find lying around. We talked about that negative zone. From quantum mechanics, we know that such matter can theoretically be created but in two small quantities and for two short times research CERN they're trying to create larger quantities for larger times right to get into the quantum however there's no proof that it is impossible to create exotic matter in sufficient quantities furthermore other equations may be discovered that allow time travel without requiring exotic matter how do you think Kang was doing it, man? How do you think Gang is Khan is doing it, man? Therefore, the issue may just be a limitation of our current technology or understanding of quantum mechanics. But you know what? Kang might have more of an understanding, man. <laughs> the other main issue is less practical but more significant. It is the observation that time travel seems to contradict logic in the form of time travel paradoxes. There are several types of such paradoxes, but the most problematic are consistency paradoxes. Uh oh, we're talking timelines now? <clears throat> A popular trope in science fiction consistency paradoxes happen when there is a certain event that leads to changing the past, but the change itself prevents this event from happening in the first place. Huh, so you change the past, but that change prevented this event from happening in the first place. For example, consider a scenario where I enter my time machine, time machine use it to go. <coughs> All right, here we go. For the dismount. Use it to go back in time five minutes. Destroy the time machine as soon as I get to the past. Now that I destroy the time machine, it will be impossible for me to use it five minutes later. But if I cannot use the time machine, then I cannot go back in time and destroy it. Therefore, it is not destroyed. So I can go back in time and destroy it. In other words, <laughs> the time machine is destroyed if and only if it is not destroyed. Damn, that's a paradox. Since it cannot be both destroyed and not destroyed simultaneously, this scenario is inconsistent and paradoxical. Eliminating the paradoxes, there is a couple of misconceptions in science fiction that paradoxes can be created. Time travelers are usually warned not to make significant changes to the past and to avoid meeting their past selves for this exact reason. Uh, just like Back to the Future. But in the physics, a paradox a paradox is not an event that can actually happen. It is purely theoretical concept that points to inconsistency in the theory itself. In other words, consistency paradoxes don't merely imply time travel is a dangerous endeavor. They imply it simply cannot be possible. Yeah, okay, boss. But you know what, man? Oh, stanky ass Kang, man. <laughs> yeah, we're talking about 
chronologies, huh? Stephen Hawking is talking chronologies. And Kang might have figured out a way. And could Kang be <laughs> Charlesy boy? <sighs> Switching up his identities. You know, we asked this question last time. Could Kang be Charles? Holy Roman Emperor Charles. Huh? I mean, we're just asking a few questions, a few neighborly questions. Could King be Holy Roman Emperor Charles? Meditate on it. If we're talking quantum, if we're talking to travel. Could King be Charles? Could Gang is Kai? Or Kang, Khan or Kang, have the time travel drive? I mean, that's a fair question. Could Kang be Khan? Huh? Can Khan be Genghis? Can Kang be Genghis? <laughs> Come on, man. Could, could Kang be. Be Genghis. Could Genghis be Charles the Fifth, Holy Roman Emperor? Could it all be one thing? Could it all be happening? According to this art drop <laughs> at 432 the drop dot com. Could it all be happening? Could Kang be Khan? Could Khan still be the Roman emperor in the 1500s. Especially since Presta got the immortal flow. Wouldn't Genghis kind of have something like it as well? Wouldn't Genghis kind of have his own type of immortal flow popping off as well? I mean, at this point, my naga, we just surfing the wave. You know. When you surf in a wave, you got to be able to let go <laughs> of everything you thought you knew and everything you think you know. And we do that all the time, whether we surfing on the YouTube flow or whether we surfing, man, with the noggins on IG, man. We try to bring these classrooms together because I know all you noggins are surfing away with me. And my nogga, I'm surfing away with you, you know. These Nagas is getting through, you know, crossing barriers. But Copper Color Con, just realize you got your own built in barrier, man. You know, love to the fam. Interesting as, uh, you know, you could read it. <laughs> Copper isn't magnetic, but creates resistance in the presence of strong magnetic fields, right? We're talking quantum fields we're talking magnetic fields copper is resistant look how it just stops the magnet in its tracks like a barrier right copper color con as copper people how do we resist hijack city we got a copper up though ain't that the truth copper water <laughs> copper everything man hold on man let me let me get a swig of my copper copper water right now man Lawa. <laughs> Love the Gerald world. He said they hit the brakes. Hey, can it stop bullets? I guess if you had strong enough, uh, you know, <laughs> situation. Or if the bullet was magnetic. I, I don't know, man. <laughs> but, hey, we're talking high tech, high tech. We're talking worlds beyond the poles. And did you know, uh, did you know this, man? Did you know this, man? Realm. They form an invisible perimeter guarding anyone who goes past the 60th South Parallel. These bases report to King and Commander-in-Chief, Prince Charles III. So is anyone above the King's authority? One person of many is Pepe Orsini, 
The Orsini family sits atop of the Illuminati power structure and above the Freemasonic network of societies. Pepe Orsini is a member of the Orsini family. This family has ties to the papacy and even have more power than the Rothschild family. Orsini are also one of 13 papal bloodlines. So next time your friends laugh at you and ask you who is they, or ask you so who's in charge of keeping us stuck here then, you can tell them about the Orsini family and Pepe Orsini. Mm. Subscribe and follow. Okay, okay. Interesting as a mother, man. I'm, I'm the British saying. Royal Navy maintains its bases all around our realm. Yeah. They, they form, form an, an invisible, invisible perimeter, perimeter guarding, guarding anyone. anyone. So check it, cons like they got us surrounded, right? Whoever they checking in with, they checking in with, but they got us surrounded. And see how they try to draw in some stars as if you're gonna get into the outer space. Nah, you get into more land, right? More space, man. More land beyond the pole left to not have foon, Dan. Huh? I wanted to address this comment. It says, bro, I thought they were flying over the ice shelf, but going under makes sense, too. Okay. So, <clears throat> here we are. Admiral Byrd flew over the ice shelf, as you call it, or the ice barrier, or the ice wall, whatever you want to call it, Antarctica. He flew over that and found more land in about 1,500 miles. That's this right here. The Ancestral Republic is the best guess, okay? okay? So you can fly uh, past the ice wall, and there's more land, and we still haven't reached the dome. Some say it's in Antarctica. I don't believe that. I think the dome is much further away. Okay. But once you get to a certain point, once you reach the dome, then you have to go and submerge and go under in order to reach the land of Mars. But let's use the land of Draco. Drag. You leave Edmund. <laughs> You'd be able to fly until you reach their ice wall, right? Okay. And you would have to submerge and go under. Now, there's a, supposedly a great dome over all of this. So maybe you can fly around in here until you reach the dome, another dome, and then you have to submerge and go under. Now, all this is just a theory, but it makes a lot of sense to me. <laughs> it makes some sense to us, too, because, I mean, look. We was over here being hijacked by Nagas that look just like us, man. This is on the walls in Lima, Peru. This is the same Charlesy boy hijacking the cars. Or are we talking Genghis Khan or Kang popping up in the timelines again, man? <sighs> who or oh, who is pressed? Hey, my jigger, my jigger pop, pop off, man. Press the job, man. Hey, I appreciate all my knockers for surfing this wave with me because we surfing the wave with you. And I appreciate y'all for tuning in to the 115th installment of the Press the John Investigation live at 432thedrop.com. Go dig on it. Go dig on the Eat the Squad flow. Look out for the new schedule popping off as we continue to crystallize our fifth wave. We got so much more to pop off in the fifth wave, so just look out for us, man. Stay tuned on all our platforms. Download our 432 The Drop app for free. Get that water, get that music, get that poetry. The live shows are coming back in hot. The water for letting me recalibrate and just get the flow flowing, man. And, you know, once you got it, you don't got to rush it because you got it. And we got the drop. Stay up. Suit up. Choose up, drop.